In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of Excel. Now, one of the first things that you may want to explore are the templates that Excel has available. So if you go to the left and if you click new, you'll find some of these templates. You have calendars, monthly budgets, balance sheet, student schedules, loan calculators, an invoice tracker, and so much more. And if you're looking for a specific type of template, you can go to the search bar. Let's say if you're looking for a specific type of budget template, you can click that and you'll get more options. Of course, you could use the search feature. Let's say if you want a loan based template, you have the loan calculator, the loan amortization schedule, and so much more. So feel free to take a minute to explore the different types of templates that you can employ, which can make your work a lot more simpler going forward. Now let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to open a new workbook. And here we are. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in by clicking this. Just so you can see everything a lot clearer. Now what we have here on the top are different tabs. We have the home tab, the insert tab. You can draw things on Excel if you want. Page layout, the formulas tab, and so much more. Let's go to the home tab. Within each tab, you have the ribbons and you have different groups. Here you have the clipboard group, font group, alignment group, and so forth. Now vertically, you have the columns which go up and down and horizontally you have the rows. The intersection of a column and a row produces a cell. So this cell here, as you can see, this is cell B4. It's in column B, row four. This is cell C6. It's in column C, row six. And you can see the identity of the cell in the name box there. Now, whenever you have a group of cells, this is known as a range. So this particular range, it starts from cell C6 and it goes to E13. You can also type it in here. Let's say if we want to create a range from cell D4 to G14. If you press enter, it'll select starting from cell D4 to G14. So that's a range of cells. Now let's talk about how we can input data into our workbook. So let's come up with a title of a template that we're going to create. Let's call this monthly sales tracker. Now one thing that we can do is we could merge a group of cells into one cell. So if we click merge and center, all of the highlighted cells will be merged into a single cell. And that new cell is A1. Now let's add some other stuff. So this column is going to represent the item number. This will be the description, the price, number of units sold, cells and then let's say sales tax whenever you finish entering data into a cell you can press enter which will put you one unit down and you could move across the workbook using the arrow keys you can go up down left right and so forth now the next thing that you need to be able to do is you need to be able to resize the columns and the rows. So to adjust the width of a column, you could simply move the cursor here, left click, hold, and then stretch it out as much as you need to. You can also adjust the size of each row if you want to as well.
Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is how to insert columns and rows. So let's say if we want to insert a column between column B and C, let's say we already have data there. Go to column C, left click, and then once you have it highlighted, right click, and then press left click on insert. And as you could see, we've inserted a new column between the original column B and C. Now, if you wish to undo it, you can just press undo at the top left under the homes tab. Now we can also add a row as well. So if you left click to highlight the second row and then right click, you can press left click insert. And now we've inserted a new row. So that's something else that we can do. Now let's go ahead and add some more data here. So remember, whenever you finish adding data, just hit enter. Now sometimes you may need to type in a list of numbers that can go on for a long time. So to save you time, what you can do is highlight the pattern that you have and then left click this little box at the bottom right, hold and then drag. So depending on how many numbers you want, you can drag it until you reach the final number that you want to get to. So that's another useful feature that Excel has. It'll extend the pattern to as far as you want to go. And it doesn't have to be just in intervals of one. Let's say if you're going up in intervals of five, once you have a pattern established, Excel will continue the pattern. Now let's add a description to each of these items. By the way, you can also change the font of the text. Much in the same way you would change it in Microsoft Word. You can also change, and if you want to make it bold, you can do so. You can italicize it, underline it and change the size of the font as well. You can also change the color of the font. And you can also change the background color of each cell, known as the fill color. So let's make it, let's leave it the way it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert another row. Next, let's go ahead and complete this table. So let's put a price to each of these items. Now let's put the number of units sold because we're going to do a little math here. I want to make sure that you know how to use some of the formulas found in Excel, particularly multiplication, percentages, and also sum and averages. Now to calculate the total monthly sales for each item, we're going to write a formula. So I'm going to put equal and then whatever is in cell D3, if you left click it, it'll enter D3. I'm going to take that value, multiply it. The multiplication symbol, you can get it by typing shift eight. And then we could highlight or type in cell E3. Press enter. So now what's found in cell 
f3 is the multiplication of d3 and e3. If you multiply 499 by 26, you'll get $12,974. And then we can right, I mean left click the box at the bottom right, and then extend the pattern. So if you click cell F3, you could see the formula that was entered, D3 times E3. If you click cell F4, the formula now is D4, E4. So we're multiplying these two together. And then the pattern continues. Cell F5 is the product of cell D5 and E5. So we don't have to type in the formula for each of these cells. We can just simply drag and then the pattern will extend. Now, if we want to get the total cells, we could use the sum function. So type in equal sum, open the parenthesis, and then highlight everything that you want to add. So here we have a range from F3 to F9. Close the parenthesis and then press enter. So this will give us the sum of the cells found in this column. So this would represent the total monthly cells for this individual store. Now there are some other mathematical operations that we can employ. Let's say if we want to take an average of a group of numbers, type in equal, average, highlight the range of numbers you want to find the average of, and then press enter after you enclose it in parentheses. So this would be the average price of the prices of these seven items. If you wish to add two cells, let's say if you want to perform addition, you could just type in equal, let's add up cell D3 and D4, and we will get the sum of those two numbers. So you could do addition, subtraction. We did multiplication already. Let's say if we want to subtract cell D3 by D4, we could do that too. And then for division, just use the backslash. So let's say if we want to divide cell D4 by cell D7. So the backslash represents division. And we will get that number. Now, in order to calculate percentages, let's say we have a 7% sales tax. You could type in equal and then choose a cell. In this case, we'll use cell F3 and we'll multiply by 7%, which as a decimal, that's 0 0.07. So that would be 7% self sales tax of whatever that number is. And let's do it again for the next one. So let's choose cell F4, and we're going to multiply by 7%. So now that we have a pattern for the formula uh, for this column, what we can do is we can extend the pattern. And then if you click each cell, you want to make sure that the pattern is correct. So we're multiplying every cell here by 7%. And then we can get the total by typing in equal sum parenthesis, highlight the range, and then close it, and then press enter. So that will be the total sales tax for the monthly sales of this particular store. Now let's turn this into a table. So I'm going to highlight this. And then I'm going to add some borders. So I'm going to choose thick outside borders. Next, I'm going to choose a thick bottom border. And then I'm going to put borders to the left of what I've highlighted. And so now it looks like a nice table. Now sometimes you may want to 
have multiple worksheets within a single workbook. If you need to create a new worksheet, just click this button at the bottom, and now you have a whole new sheet. And there's many sheets that you can add to your workbook. And so that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into how you can get started using Excel. By the way, for those of you who want to know how to make a line chart, especially if you have like a lab report to write, uh, feel free to check out this video. If you go to the YouTube search box and type in how to make a line chart, organic chemistry tutor, it should come up in the search results. So feel free to take a look at that as well, which really complements this video that you're watching.